everybody watching. Welcome to part two of the mirror frame um, upgrade. So today we're going to um, oops, decoupage the actual mirror side. So instead of keeping this frame as a mirror, I am um, turning it into wall art. So um, this is the mirror on the other side and I've pre-painted it and today we're going to decoupage it and finish it off so this is what we're starting with at the moment and I haven't decided on what paper I'm going to use today for this so um, I'm going to need your guys' opinions I have um, four options so I'm going to show you kind of what they would look like and then um, I don't know if you have an opinion <laughs> then let me know um, I think I know which one is my favorite, but um, we'll see what you guys think. Um, yeah, and so let's get started. I'm just going to get the papers. I've laid them all out. So the first one is, the first option is this tissue paper. So these are all Finnabar papers, so from Finnabar. Um, and it's very, very thin tissue paper. So the first option is cherubs and I'm just going to place it on top of my mirror here, how I kind of envision it would go and then place the frame over the top and then you can kind of see what it would look like. So I'm going to tilt you this way and actually lift you up a little bit as well. Katarzyna, hello. Right, so this is option number one, and that's cherubs. And I really like it, but I don't know, there's also other options, so wait until we actually have them all out to make your decision. So that's option number one. I'm gonna get the other paper. Option number two is this um, paper with birds and butterflies and flowers. So this is from Finnabar's new release. This is the new paper. So I um, really like the way that this kind of part of the tissue paper looks inside of the frame. So this is kind of what it would look like. Obviously for me it's upside down at the moment. So. Um, it might not be centered perfectly well. Hello, Carla. And so this is option number two. So the birds and the butterflies. Option number three is this beautiful paper with butterflies and writing which i really really like and so this is kind of what it would look like inside of the frame haha <laughs> because <laughs> number one already <laughs> you don't even know all of my options yet hello karen Right, so this is option number three, butterflies. I really like the way that the colour looks together with the frame and how it's all like. We have a very um, feminine and girly frame and, you know, we have a very feminine paper here. So, yeah, I really like the way that this one looks as well, but that being said, I like them all. And then this is my wild card. I actually really like the way that this um, new paper looks with this frame so this is the motive that I would personally go for inside of this frame so this little corner piece because of the writing and I think it kind of centers in nicely in the frame and I know it's um, sea themed and I don't really do 
um, sea theme stuff all the time or ever really <laughs> so um but i really like the way that it looks like inside of this frame because um like i said in my last last live stream when we did the frame um this frame really reminds me of like um seashells and stuff like that because of this thing here at the top um so i guess that's why i'm personally really drawn to <laughs> this paper and i like the way that the colors go together it's not your typical um, you know, like very ornate frame and cherubs. Um, it's something a little bit more out there. So that's my personal favorite. But yeah, you let me know what you think. Claire, hello. Oh, that second paper. Yeah, the second one is amazing. They, they all are, to be fair. Um, Claire, you missed the first one and the second one. Um, Carla, one or three? <laughs> Number one, because my paper is still unused. <laughs> so you're living out your dreams <laughs> through me. <laughs> um, so let me just show you number. So this was option number two, this paper. This is the, um, from Finnabar's new release. Um, right, so this is the motive that I kind of would go for. So this is the option number two with um, birds and butterflies and flowers. Again, really nice color combination, I personally think. Um, Karen, well, I did not expect anything else from you. Any <laughs> go for your favorite. Like we always say, why are you even bothering asking the public? Because they're always going to go for different stuff. And then this is option number one. So this was my... Um, wait, which one was it? Which corner was I after? It's either one of these, really. So this is option number one, cherubs. Not this one. Was it this corner or this corner? Because they are slightly different. I can't remember which one I like better. Oh, either way, this is kind of what option number one looks like. Hi, Inga. Hello. How are you today? How is everybody doing? So, number one, number two, but one or three. Hi, Agnieszka. So let me know what your favorite paper is. In the meantime, um, so once we've decoupaged the paper, I think I'm going to leave it pretty simple. I think I'm just going to um, decoupage it because we have a very ornate um, and kind of complex looking frame. I don't really want to add anything into the middle and overcomplicate it. Though you could definitely, you know, once you've decoupaged it, like you can go ahead and add like a mixed media um, a composition. In, in the center of the mirror or something like that. But also the reason why I'm not gonna be adding any like um, 3D elements inside of the frame is because um, because I am, you know, I'm doing this on the back side of the mirror. So the um, front side of the mirror is still a mirror. So I want to keep it reversible. So <laughs> if I ever get bored of it, and I'm in desperate need of a mirror, I can just open the back up, flip it around, and then, you know, it's a mirror again. Um, I really like that idea. <laughs> I can't remember, I'm so sorry, I can't remember who it was who came up with that idea in the last live stream saying that I should keep it reversible, but I really liked it, so um, thank you. Um, yeah, and then so far, so what I did is I cleaned the back of the mirror, and I applied uh, four coats of white gesso over it. So that's all we have going on here. And then we're going to 
and then we're gonna decoupage the tissue paper and I think I might add a little bit of a um, shadow on the on the tissue paper kind of once we're finished um, with some matte waxes but we'll see when we get there um, <clears throat> Inga likes the angels, Petrogina likes the angels. Uh, I can see colours match in wildcard, but I like number one. Yes, better to have two options. Yes. <laughs> um, right, okay. Well, I guess everybody likes the um, cherubs then, so that's what we're going to go for. That's what we're going to go for. That was my original um, idea. I originally. Um, I wanted to do the cherubs, but um, I laid out all of the papers that I have yesterday and I kind of went around and placed the frame over them to see, you know, if I like all of them or which ones I like best and stuff. And so um, I saw that um, when I placed it over the um, the one with fishes, I just really liked the way that the, um, the colours look together and again because um, like I've never done a sea themed project before I guess that's why I was like oh maybe this is the time for me to actually go ahead and do it so anyways I'm gonna tilt you this way so that you can see what I'm doing I'm gonna move this frame to the side out of my way it around so that I can see what I'm doing as well <laughs> and we need to I need to cut this paper so that it's a little bit more manageable so this is going to be the look that we're going for so I can see the outline because this paper is so like see-through you can really like see everything through it so I'm just gonna take a brush got some water over here and I'm just gonna take a clean brush and go around the edges not like the very edge but go around I'm leaving about five centimeters, maybe four, from the edge to give me a little bit of wiggle room. And then I just rip the paper. Now it's going to make it much more manageable and easier to work with. going to place this piece on the floor next to me so that it can dry and then I can save the rest of it and use it another time. <laughs> so, there were angels, well no that's fine, they're almost angels, cherubs. Angels, same thing. <laughs> Hi, Vasilis. How are you today? So, let's apply it on. I'm gonna use um, soft gloss gel again by Finnebar to glue it down. It is
is a big paper, so we're going to have to work in kind of sections. I can't just um, apply glue all over the whole thing and then just put the paper on straight away. So we're going to work in smaller sections again to make it a bit more manageable. I think I'm going to start from the bottom end today because we've got the cherubs on the bottom. So I want to make sure that I get as many, as much of the um, cherub onto my um, base. So I've got some soft gloss gel, I've got a brush, and I've got a cloth, and that's going to help us get the paper down. And I'm going to apply soft gloss gel all over and about a quarter or a fifth of the way. And then I'll pick it up. And I rub it on. So um, this is about where my um, glue ended. So I'm just gonna fold it back and then start applying a little bit more glue. Just a little bit at a time. And then I bring it up. bring it up and fold it back and repeat the process. You're better, that's good. I'm glad you're better, Vasilis. Hi, Carolyn. <laughs> I'm not surprised it's your favourite paper. <laughs> yes, well, I had to. Everybody likes the cherubs, so, you know. You've got to give the people what people want, so. Cherubs it is. To be fair, it's not like I don't like them. <laughs> it's just that I like a lot of the papers. I like them all. And it's difficult to choose one. Here's the best technique for not having wrinkles. Yes, it definitely helps. I mean, I do have a couple of wrinkles here because it doesn't matter what kind of paper you're using. Um, when you apply a water-based product onto it, it's still going to um, kind of stretch out a little bit, unless you're using rice paper. Rice paper is pretty, um, you know, robust for it. But if you're using any other type of paper, it's still going to loosen up a little bit and you're still probably going to get a couple of wrinkles. But the bonus with this paper is that it's so thin that um, you can just go over the, um, the wrinkle that you might have somewhere and just like burnish it in with your finger and then you can't even feel it anymore. But yeah, it definitely helps. And there you go. The 
whole thing is on. I'm just going over it kind of one final time to make sure it's all nice and smooth everywhere. Tissue paper looks great with the white behind. It definitely does. That's exactly what you want to do. If you are decoupaging something that is quite sheer, like tissue paper or napkins or rice paper, you always want to um, try and make your background as light as possible, white ideally, because um, it allows all of the colors come true, um, you know, when you actually look at it. Okay, so now that the paper is on, I'm going to apply another coat of soft gloss gel over the top. And this is going to seal it in. Um, depending on what you're doing or what kind of project you're making, you might not want to go over with another coat of um, glue or might not need to, but um, again, I, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a decoupage girl, so um, that's what we do. You always glue it twice, from, from the bottom and from the top. Unless you're using napkins, I mean, then I just apply glue over the top. Hello, how are you? How are you doing today? Tissue paper is even worse than napkins, you think? Because, I, I don't know, in, in my experience, <laughs> tissue paper has been so much easier to work with. Maybe it's because the fact that, like, if you get a wrinkle, you just, like, go over it with your finger and, like, it basically almost disappears. But, um, and I guess if I'm using napkins, I always um, try and go with my um, water technique. Um, so that kind of gives me zero wrinkles. Um, so I don't know. I don't know about that controversial opinion. Okay, another coat of glue is on. Now I need to somehow pick it up. There you go. And I'll just move it to the side and let it dry for a little bit. I might have to get the hairdryer out um, just to get it all you know, dry um, so that we can move on to the next step a little bit quicker. I'm just going to clean off all this glue off my desk. To apologize in advance um, when I get the hair dryer out. Get your ear muffs ready. Hello, Sharon. Hello. Uh, Tina Lane by Linda Carter. Love it. Thank you. But do you prefer to use gloss rather than matte? Um, you know, usually I um, don't really have a preference because typically I will um, go over my project with varnish um, and um, I have varnishes in different finishes so if I feel like having a gloss project then I just apply gloss varnish over the top or if I, um, so I don't really um, kind of have a preference in terms of like what kind of glue I use. In terms of varnishes, I, I find that I usually stick to matte simply because um, matte, um, when it's fully matte, when it's like a dead flat matte finish, um, you don't have to worry about brush strokes in varnish and you just get like a really nice even finish and you know there's none of that like buffing <laughs> or, or anything like that that's required. So. I, it's easier for me personally and I do a lot of vintage projects and vintage projects um, typically for, for um, call for matte varnish um, need to check water technique for napkins yeah um if you go to my youtube channel you'll find it on there um, 
Hello, Teresa. Hi, Nancy. Hello, hello from Denmark. Hello, Denmark. <laughs> right, I'm going to um, now get my hair dryer out. So, um, a couple of minutes of um, loud sounds. So, I do apologize. Okay, so this is now dry enough for me to be able to sand off the edges. So that's what I'm going to do. I've got some sandpaper. Any sandpaper will do. You want to use um, something that's like medium grip, not too coarse, because then you might damage your um, surface. And just go over the edges. for this instead of sandpaper as well so I guess that could be a hack <laughs> This is decoupaged glass, so I'm trying to <laughs> be a bit more careful because I don't want to like chip it or anything like that. Hello, Olga. How are you? Susanna, thank you so much for your comments.
got it all up all of the excess paper so again before i do anything else i need to clean off the dust So, shall we put the frame over and see what it looks like? I mean, I do really, really, really like it. I think the colours just blend together so nicely. And, you know, we have a little bit of glimmer and shimmer from the pixie paste, which I am absolutely in love with. So, um, I don't know, I'm tempted to um, gesso it with um, some matte gesso over the top um, because this is very, very glossy and I'm not sure if I like the look of it. And, um, again, you could use... Um, varnish so typically I would use varnish matte varnish um, for wood but um, that does take a long time to dry you can't really use well you can but you shouldn't really use like heat or any excess uh, outside sources um, you know to dry your varnish so I'm just gonna go in with um, clear transparent gesso and this dries completely matte so there you go just talking about matte versus gloss and it's always good to have options when I first started um, with decoupage and um, upcycling and mixed media and everything I was very much into the gloss finishes I was um, obsessing over, you know, getting that perfect gloss finish, um, like a mirrored effect. So um, that took a lot of time <laughs> and practice. Uh, and so I think like at the moment, I'm also a little bit like over it, over the gloss in a way. But of course, again, like depends on the project that you're making. I'm just applying a thin coat of clear transparent gesso. This is also a good hack, um, like the gesso, this gesso is going to be great if you um, use this paper as a base and then you want to um, do a layout or something like that. Um, and it's going to give you a nice, nice base for this. And then again, um, I want to do wax over the top today, so um, you know I want to get all of this finished in one sitting. So um, I'm applying gesso so that then I can wax over the top, and then I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to varnish over the top or anything. Um, again, because it's a piece that's going to go on the wall, it doesn't really need much protection. However, if you was to um, just do this on a piece of furniture, I definitely recommend sealing it with um, something that is specifically made for furniture. <clears throat> Fine, good, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Watching is learning. <laughs> Looking for your beautiful creation. Well, is he? Is part one available? Yes, Sharon, it is part one is available in this group. So if you go into this group and type in my name, you should be able to find it. Um, it's from last week. I did part one is from last Thursday. Thank you, Olga. And thank you, Sharon. Hi, Viviana. Welcome to the stream. Um, thank 
you so much, Moisa. Mo Moisa, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. I'm so bad with names. Thank you, Gloria. Clear is my favorite gesso to use. Yeah, it's it's great. It just gives you, um, it gives you exactly what you need, which is a nice um, grit and you know some protection over the top, um, and. It's transparent, so you can see exactly what's going on underneath. Hi, Eileen. Hello, that's okay. That's okay, you're not late, you're just on time. Right, once again, I'm gonna have to um, just whip out the hairdryer real quick. So again, game of salt. <laughs> I need to make it into like a, um, I don't know, Disclaimer before all of my live streams <laughs> bring earmuffs. dry so as you can see no um, shininess at all it's all completely matte now and this is what it looks like I really 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 love it <laughs> love the way it looks now right so now let's get the wax on also I'm gonna really try and get my um, heat gun out <laughs> for the next live stream. I think heat guns are a little bit quieter, aren't they? So, um, I want to do like a slightly, almost like a faded um, border frame on the inside, so coming from the inside of the frame. So I've placed my mirror over the top so that I can see, you know, where it's going to go over my picture. And then I've got my pencil and I'm going to run it around but I'm gonna have it a little bit tilted so that if anything happens then you can't see um, then you won't be able to see the pencil marks um, on the inside so that it kind of stays a little bit further inside like this and then I'll be able to see where my frame is supposed to go and where my um, 
my shadow needs to be. that I know where to wax. Okay. So thereabouts, I've got the general outline of where I need to start applying the wax or where like the, the inside is going to be. So this should... Um, you should do so the two waxes that i'm going to apply is rusty brown and charcoal black i'm going to start with rusty brown so this is going to be my base this is a matte wax and i'm just gonna no i'm gonna take a clean plate I'm not gonna be gross this time i'm just gonna take a clean plate and squeeze out a little bit of this rusty brown and I'm going to take a stencil brush, take some wax, and I'm going to start going over the outline that I created, starting from the outline and fading the wax out. I don't know if you can see it straight away but instantly I can see um, this like shadow happening here and so I use um, a circular motion and I bring it quite far into really uh, but I'm trying to keep like the darkest part of it towards the inside um, or towards the outside of the frame rather um, and then bring it out so when I just pick up the wax I first apply it onto my outline that I created and then I start bringing it out when I've got a little bit less wax on my brush so kind of to not um, create, you know, a bit of a mess, although that happens very often <laughs> and we usually find ways to deal with it. So we're just darkening it up. These matte waxes are great for this kind of stuff. So when you just need um, a shadow, so when you're doing a vintage project and you want to add either a little bit of color or um, a little bit of a shadow, you can use this instead of um, paint and not have um, a metallic shine on it because at the moment I personally don't feel like adding any uh, metallic to the actual picture, to the image, because the frame itself is so um, kind of beautiful and out there, it doesn't need any any extra help in that sense. I think if we, if we overdo it, it's just going to take away from the frame, in my personal opinion. <coughs> Thank you so much. And so I'll just keep doing this in a more soft, circular motions.
I do struggle with this um, usually when I'm doing like um, you know this size of a pro this size project is fine but um, usually if I have something um, that that is a little bit bigger I find that I start from one end and I do it nice and neatly and then by the time I've gone around it I'm kind of like I'm all the way out here <laughs> um, I'm bringing it out a lot further and stuff so something that you need to keep in check and I find the best way to combat that is to take regular breaks <laughs> if needed if you need to take a break every like you know kind of segment that you do take a little step back check in with yourself right so I've lost my outline here at the top so I'm just going to place the frame over again a lot going on here at the top so it's not as visible right so that's the brown now I'm gonna take a clean brush and a smaller one this time Take some of this charcoal black. See it? There it is. And I'm gonna again go in more um, from the outline that I made with my pencil and kind of fade it out a little bit more. You can use your finger if you need to, to help smudge it out. And this just kind of creates um, a little bit more depth. So we have our base color, the brown, and then we have the dark color, the darker color, the, um, the black for an extra dramatic effect. So if you just went over with the black straight away, you would still have like a dramatic, a dramatic effect, but it would be much more dramatic because the, um, the fade over, the, um, the change would be, you know, from this kind of light um, color that you have here in the middle to like a really harsh um, dark dark grey um, so this charcoal black um, it's not very black it's more like um, it is like charcoal black it's um, like a very dark grey I'm just gonna place my frame over the top again check in with myself make sure that I'm doing everything right oh, there you go yes there you go so this black is really bringing that like dramatic effect that shadow in Liliana, me too. <laughs> and I've been looking at it every every day this week. <laughs> me too. You know, I'm um, in a desperate need to like um, repaint my bedroom now so that this um, frame actually fits in into my bedroom <laughs> because um, because we have that awful magnolia color in our bedroom still. So. I really need to get on it 
and repaint it. Thank you, Christy. Yes, Carolyn, it's, it's, it's a really handy um, thing to have, like these kind of matte waxes. So obviously we all love the metallic ones because they give us um, that, that shine. But matte waxes are very important, um, you know, to have in your stash as well because they, they can give you very nice looks too. Not everything has to be shiny. <laughs> right, so there you go. So we created um, like a much more dramatic frame around. So let's place the frame over it. Actually can't put it back in right now because <laughs> the um, the back in is in the other room I didn't think about that and um, I can't remember where I put the actual clips that go on the back um, they're somewhere here around my desk and I can't see them right now so I can't put it back together <laughs> I should have thought about that but oh well this is let me see if I can place it in and just hold it for you is the final result of our past two live streams that we did last week and this week the gorgeous gorgeous frame with all of the glimmers and shimmers and shines and the matte more vintage um, artwork on the inside and the best part about this whole thing is that on the back side it's still a mirror so if um, I ever need to change it over and um, have it as a mirror, I can just flip it over and, you know, take the, the inside out, flip it over and then have a mirror instead. Um, I did think about how nice it would look if, um, you know, you had some like resin castings and you could like screw little um, hooks inside and just have them hanging. Sort of like Inga, you did your, um, your box with the hanging ornaments. Um, so something like that, you know, like little stars or something like that, that would look cool as well. But I don't have any screwing things and I did not have the chance to go in and um, go and get any. <laughs> but I think that would also look amazing, you know, little um, stars. But yeah, there we go. So this is the finished frame, the mirror and the frame. I really hope that you enjoyed the um the process watching me create it over the past um two sessions and does anybody have any questions that frame is torture <laughs> uh, magnolia the most popular color for the wall in uk definitely <laughs> um that's the default color setting for uk homes dropping in to say hello a bit. Hi Sheila! Always creating amazing things. Thank you so much. Oh my god, my ear is so red. <laughs> Don't look at it. <laughs> oh Liliana, see, uh, maybe one day, if you, if you come over, I'll swap you. I'll swap this mirror for your frame that you hate, apparently, for the, the frame, for the, the, for the picture that you hate, apparently, because I'll, I'll happily take it. Thank you so much, Kat. Missed the first one and need to go watch it. Yes, you definitely need to because this was very, very easy to create. And I mean, look at the result that we got. Um, mm -hmm. That's a beautiful fairy tale. <laughs> you, you do <laughs> my address. <laughs> I, I do 
have your address so <laughs> but I don't think I'm ready to part with it yet that's so beautiful thank you thanks so much Eileen and uh, the frame of the army is mine <laughs> I mean, Claire is much closer to me than any of you other girls, so... Um, the mirror became so beautiful. Thank you, Vasilis. Thank you, Agnieszka. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dali. I'm gonna see um, this slide forever. It's my ticket to that frame. Yes, yes, definitely. You want to save it, um, put it in a safe, keep it somewhere where you won't, get, won't lose it. But yeah, ah, again. There it is. I'll post some pictures of it um, tomorrow, of the finished piece. So if you want to have like a closer snoop at it, there's going to be pictures. And I'm going to post like a video um, at some point as well, another day. Uh, because Facebook won't allow me to post videos and pictures at the same time for whatever reason. <laughs> I don't know why, if anybody has a hack for how to um, get it to do it, then let me know. But um, yeah, so there it is. And thank you so much for tuning in. And I will see you guys, not next week, um, but on the 17th of December. So I will see you in two weeks for another project. I don't know what we're gonna create, but it's definitely gonna be something interesting, uh, probably something upcycled, because I'm gonna have a friend drop off some stuff for me that she's been collecting. So um, I'm interested to see what's inside that, those boxes. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll probably do something upcycled once again. And thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you guys.